cement it every separate day. You want to have some sort of, you want to retain, you know, that which makes each, you know, region or community unique and, and acknowledge that you can't have a one-size-fits-all approach to addressing our, our broadband infrastructure gap in Minnesota. But I think that a lot of communities would benefit from having some direction in how you get from point A to point B. And that's some of the feedback I've heard. And I, I don't know the extent to which that's on your radar. I know you have so much, so much to do here. But I think that's one thing that a number of, of communities in Minnesota would benefit from if we were to spend a little bit of time about how that would look. And again, I don't know if that's something the task force would want to take up itself. And then I'm, I'm really interested in focusing on these you know, applications and what we do with this stuff. And I, you know, you can talk about speed goals all you want. They're important. But I think the most important thing is the end user experience. What are our students and our teachers doing with, with uh, you know, internet access? What are, what, what are our farmers need? Or how about you know, home-based businesses or, or the economic development angle in telehealth? And just really getting specific about that. Because from my perspective, I think that's what makes it real for, for my colleagues. And, you know, on the health committee, the education committee, when you're able to talk about, oh, this is how you make that work. You've got to have that connectivity. This is how you achieve you know, increased efficiencies or, or maximize your return on investment. So, those are the sorts of things that I think would be really helpful uh, you know, from a legislative standpoint is to talk about this in that end user you know, kind of terminology or perspective. And so uh, I, I want to, you know, for some of you have some more things to say here. I think we've been going on for a while, I imagine. But those are the sorts of things as I've seen this discussion play out. What does it really mean? It's not just about goals, it's really about the day to day lives. It's about you know, maximizing our, our economic potential in greater Minnesota. And, and you know, making our schools more more uh, you know, more efficient and, and healthcare more efficient, and that's the way I think that we need to talk about broadband. I know that you guys have done a great job of doing that, but I think the, the need for for that emphasis is been reinforced in my conversations. I think there's a couple of simple things to keep in mind. First of all, we've got to start with the data. What don't we know? What do we know? Um, there used to be lots of speculation out there as to how much speed do I really have versus my neighbor. Uh, and, and there's just a lot of misinformation there. Um, and obviously, if you're a, a regional center and you're applying for a grant and you don't get it, that's going to be one of the first things you point to is, unfortunately, uh, Connect Minnesota is doing is, is the data correct? So let's make sure that we can put that to rest and work with the telecom uh, to make sure that everyone's working on the same basis. I think that's just so important out there. Um, then the second part is, uh, and, and I've dealt with this a lot back when the internet was first coming to schools. We were all excited, and our schools have great connectivity right now. Uh, but suddenly, we would get this big pipeline into school, and everybody would go, "Okay, now, uh, you know, this this isn't just Netflix anymore. Uh, there's so much more behind it." So, Dana, what you're going to have to do is, uh, along the side of deciding how we're going to distribute some of these resources, is awareness. And I think a lot of that can happen. Um, surprise, surprise! You know, I'm not a big government guy, but a lot of that can happen with the telecom. And helping them get out to their, their bases, like Todd County, for example. Um, how can CenturyLink and how can them be out there sh shouldering the burden to say, this is what this means for you in healthcare, this is what this means for you in your agriculture? Because your school districts probably already set. Um, and how do we make sure that they understand what this is really going to mean when it hits the front door? Um, how do our economic developers understand, hey, this is really another tool for attracting businesses? This isn't just now so you can send reports faster. This is really about how do we go out and cultivate um, a, a mobile business, a mobile user business, and come in and say, you know what, for the first time in Todd County, we can offer you to come set up your shop in your home and travel freely back and forth between the county and always have connectivity. Um, one of the things that I, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, from a working economic development, our, our underserved areas have to understand that when you're a mobile using business, when, you're, when you have a virtual company, if whoever the leader of the business, he or she is, when they leave their business and they drive to the grocery store, and if they can't handle the three calls from their kids and the two calls from prospective buyers of their product, and they lose cell phone coverage, they're not coming. And so all of that plays in, and, and I think this broadband will be great, and it, we've taken some great steps forward, but we have to go farther into these counties and say, this is what's really coming for you, and this is what it means to you. Um, it can't just be the nice editorial that shows up in the newspaper that says we have broadband. Um, so that, that's, I think that's our bigger challenge, because the pipeline's coming. The infrastructure's coming down the road. We've got political momentum. It'll take some time, but we're moving that direction. Um, I mean, everything's pointing in the right direction. 
but now we really have to get to these, and some of these people, um, you know, they've been doing things uh, differently, or they've been doing things one way for a long way, and business is going to change now. Um, I was just, and, and there's a book that uh, is called It's Complicated, that I'm just starting to read. It's all about uh, how the kids that I had, my generation, how they're using social media. And, you know, they're three, four years away from starting their businesses. And that's that's going to be very interesting for us on how they, because they're doing things online that we don't think they're doing. We're, we're you know, we, uh, you know, I'll use myself as an example, we're kind of setting our ways, right? We, we think they're they're all doing all these gaming and all, but they're not. They, they've got a whole other persona that they're doing. One of the things I didn't realize was, um, you know, these kids are having a great time online making up stuff. Uh, one of the, when you go to, when we go to do our surveys or you go to fill out an application, the two biggest companies that that everyone is from is Afghanistan and Zimbabwe. Because of the top of the list and the bottom of the list, because they're, la- they're not giving them their real data. And so we're going to have to really get to that as what these people are doing online. And so that's going to be our bigger problem. How, how does Todd County, Minnesota, or how do some of these underserved areas, how do they really deal with these people that are coming with the social media bent to them, and how do they really adjust to that? Um, I don't know. I don't know how we adjust that uh, with a government budget. I don't know how we adjust that with awareness, and I don't know how we train people all the way back to our schools. What are we doing in our schools right now to help you be that efficient entrepreneur online? Um, so that's probably a lot to bite off, but uh, just that that becomes so critical. I mean, once you, anybody can plug in the fiber. And then the green light comes on and you go, okay, now. So what I think is interesting about your answer is that, with both of your answers, is that they're um, both focused on the outside more than the inside of the capital. And I think that's a compliment to both of you who have been doing a lot of work on helping educate colleagues. Um, I will say that in our testimony at the Capitol this year, and I think early on, maybe like about seven times or eight times in the first part of the session, the although there are those random uh, questions about, you know, sort of skeptics of, of who might not think this is useful or helpful, that's gone way down, even in a year, I think, and I think that is because of the work that's going on and I, I think that's helpful to, to keep in mind that you've been doing a lot of uh, internal education on why why the fund is needed and why connectivity is important. And I think it's good to hear about ideas like a toolkit because maybe you know eventually the office and the task force together can work on something like that. And the idea, I mean, we do talk about application a lot, and I think both of you are really talking about that is the the ability for Minnesotans to see how they would use the technology. Do other folks have questions about what's happening right now? I mean, right now the bill is in conference committee, uh, the budget bill, where, as Senator Schmidt mentioned, uh, the House has a position of $25 million for a broadband fund. Uh, Unfortunately, the Senate does not have the broadband fund right now. <laughs> and so I think it is kind of a, a you know, it's, it's really, at some point, it's at a higher pay grade than the people sitting in front of us who get to decide uh, what happens next in terms of the dollar level. And, and you know, if I could to that point, I, one of the things that we need to do, and, uh, you know, look at Andy here, if we can continue to build this awareness from the grassroots out, I mean, we know how things happen now. The more people that are calling me and pressuring me, the more I'm going to push on the other side. And one of the things that I think of with the telecoms, if there was a way we could partner with them or uh, even uh, uh, other companies to go out and give them the authority to offer these webinars, to offer these talks and say, you know what, if Century Tell comes in, this is what we can do for you, or this is what your entrepreneurs do. But we don't have to do everything. And again, you certainly can't do all that. You've got enough going on. So partnering with these folks that are really going to work with us side by side to build that sense of urgency. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting when I first went to Todd County uh, two years ago and I was talking about broadband, they didn't want it. They just said, you know what, we're fine. I've got dial up. And I said, you know, are your kids going to college? Oh, yeah. I said, get grandkids uh, internationally. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go to Skype them. 
oh, I can't do that. You know, it's just once they, once those personal connections that they've had in dialogue. And, you know, it's amazing how much it's changed. So this has really got to come from our our folks out in Minnesota. Uh, they, they really have to want it. And I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clear when they want it, it's going to happen. Uh, we can start the ball moving, and that's going to happen. So a good question for you two, and I know we'll continue to have conversations with you throughout the year, and we, we just sort of are more focused on uh, the legislative, uh, where we are today. We are, you know, under a month left. And uh, what, what are the maybe top three things that members of the task force can do to be helpful at this point? You know, I think despite all the attention that this issue's gotten, from Minnesota, I still think uh, education is a key thing. I would just encourage you to, to contact your own legislator and any chance you get to kind of make the case for why this is important, whether it's you know, a more focus on broadband technology, the capital, uh, the creation of a fund. Um, you, know, net, you know, I'd like in the future to just make sure that we're authorizing you know, uh, um, you know, what communities can do in partnership with providers and cooperatives. To, to, to tap into local revenue. Because if you look at this challenge, I mean, this task force identified that broadband infrastructure gap of what, $900 million to $3.2 billion. The cost would take us to New York State's people. <coughs> the state can't do a you know, fraction you know, of that. I mean, so we've got to figure out how do you how do you leverage the capital? And so the state can have a role, you know, the, the, the providers, the cooperatives, they can have a role. I mean, let's tap into as much federal money as we possibly can, but that, that future is uncertain at best. What sorts of things can we do at a uh, local or regional level to kind of augment and play off of these discussions? And, and that's something, you know, that's a conversation we need to have. And, and, and I want folks, I really love folks to come into to that conversation with an open mind. And at the end of the day, you know, if I've said this a hundred times, I've probably said it more, we, we've got to play off of our strengths. We've got to utilize the, 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 you know, I guess the resources we have in all these markets that provide the products are already out there doing the hard work. How do we take that step forward together? And I think that's the next challenge for us in terms of the next steps policy-wise. Um, you know, beyond that, you know, I think there's just a broader discussion. It's not just about infrastructure. It's not just about adoption. But it's about positioning Minnesota to be as competitive an environment as we possibly can. So you talk about cybersecurity. You talk about incentives for tracking data centers. I mean, you guys have talked about this in the past. Uh, consumer protection issues, you know, and just to make sure that we're, we're where we need to be in those discussions. In my mind, that's all part of this broader discussion, and it's easy to focus on the infrastructure, but I think these other aspects need to follow suit. And I think hopefully, you know, what we've done in the last couple of years here, you know, just you know, the more champions we can at the legislature, the better uh, to, to, to focus on these issues. And I think we all have our expertise, we all have our perspectives. Just share those with as many uh, legislators as you possibly can on a regular basis, just so you know we, we don't let this momentum fall. I think we just got to keep building. And, and, and building in a manner that we're moving forward together, that we're doing things that are constructive, we're not working against each other, that we're in sync as best we can be. And I, I think that's a great, I mean, this, this task force is a great sounding board, a great, uh, great time for that sort of discussion. So I just compliment everybody in the room for that. How about the Senate now for Yeah, there you go. Let's get specific. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I just I have to tell you, I think, you know, I'll just be frank, my, my colleagues, there's so much expertise in different areas at the Capitol, but I think there's a, a sore you know, misunderstanding of broadband and, and, and technology generally. And so, yeah, if we want to get specific about the next two weeks, I mean, you know, let's talk about reaching out to my colleagues on the, on the corporate conference committee because big decisions will be made. And, and I have to tell you, I'm, I'm concerned that there's just a lack of basic understanding about what's at stake here. And, uh, and we can get into more details here and have, you know, uh, well, we, we've jumped the gun on this. We do have an email out there, and I good, know some good, of you have good. actually done it, but um, I didn't know it's that, helpful. So it's it's helpful. I need you to say it, though. Uh, <laughs> I'll say it. Contact them, because they need to hear. I mean, it's, I don't want to But it is really guys. important yeah. right now, and now's about the time. I mean, not everyone on, on the group can do it, because some of you have other roles that, that are playing at the Capitol, but I would say two-thirds of the task force could Absolutely. send those emails easily, and it's very helpful right now. Um, just can pull that up. That went out, I think, uh, right before the legislative break. And oh, great. I know that. Great. So um, that, that's just a very helpful thing, both to the House and the Senate and the leadership. So we, we think that's an important thing. Just a good thing. I did get a response. Great. I added a little personal. Yeah. You know, here's why. Here's how we're going to Great. Other people. 
and other people are the organization. Great. Good. The other thing I would add, you know, whatever's going to happen, that bill is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but a couple of things that maybe as you come together and brainstorm would be if we could reach out to our business community and find some entrepreneurs who take advantage of it. Especially, I mean, there's this little resurgence one. We could find uh, half a dozen men and women who have started their companies in their homes and have used broadband, and then get them out on a, on a tour, get them out on a speaking tour, you know, show them examples of this is what we've done, and and work with our our providers, work with our business community, and that's what we really need to do is build that excitement up so someone can identify and say, you know what, I, I'm with you, right? I can do that. I can start. You know, I've been thinking of starting this business. I see you've done it. Um, that that's really critical, and we have to. We just have to depolarize this issue. Um, I think it's getting better, but this should be like the the farm to school bill. You know? mm -hmm. how, how can you not vote for it, right? Mm -hmm. We're taking food right into the schools. Same thing with this. Um, we just have to really get away from the, the negative connotations that we sometimes pit each other against with with the industry versus the government. And it's just put those issues to rest. Um, we do this right. Uh, we can build a huge infrastructure that will will drive our economy. <laughs> we should well, also learn from myself. We need lots of <laughs> Well, we want to thank you for being here, for being such great champions. We appreciate it.